guys, welcome back to the channel. I recently picked up these door bushings from Spider Chat, and uh, before I put them in, I thought I might as well try to objectify a difference they make, uh, as the discussion on whether they make a difference or not is very up in the air, and it's all about feeling and whatnot. And some people claim it's placebo, some people say it transforms the car. So, what I'm gonna try to do take some measurements and uh, see if I can put some numbers to the chassis rigidity. Now, in my mind, there's two main types of chassis rigidity. We have torsional and bending or longitudinal. And I guess both an issue with a convertible like this. So I'm gonna take four measurements and we'll see if I can find a difference and the way the chassis moves, or if it's even measurable at all. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but let's see. All right, we got the pushing in here. Uh, this side's a little tight. Now I, uh, I've ordered some Teflon tape, like the people were saying on Spider Chat, uh, but it's really not too bad. This side is worse. Um, gotta close it a little harder probably get better over time. Uh, this side is on the VIN sticker, but hopefully that'll be fine once my tape comes in. It should be a lot easier to open and close. Now I should point out that since this is a facelifted car, um, Toyota added some bracing underneath the floor. So uh, I, th I think these bushings would help more on a pre-facelift car. Uh, but I still, I got, I have the stock um, strut tower brace in the back, not in the front. So in theory, without the door bushings really the only thing holding the front and rear parts of the car together is just the floor. So the idea is that you're making a strong connection from the, the door frame through the bushing into the rest of the chassis. All right, so the way I'm gonna measure this is I've marked off four points on the car, left front, left and rear, right front, right rear. And I am using a measuring tape, which I know is pretty laughable. But for the time and budget of this, this is the best thing I can think of. Um, I am measuring down to the 30 seconds of an inch. Um, and the amount of air that can be in here is insane. Um, but what I'm doing on the front is I have some sticks uh, taped down, which I'm going to pass through the hole in this, and then I'm only measuring the bottom with the tape. All right, so this is my basic setup. I got these uh, little sticks here. I taped them to the uh, soft top latch part. And then I added some tape around it so that the tape measure will sit on a cons consistent point. Uh, and yeah, I realized that these are super loose and I was trying really hard to keep them uh, still as I was measuring. So yeah, the uh, data could just be all jumbled from that, but hopefully I find something. But so here's, I got the stick through the tape measure hole and I was measuring right in this little corner. Let's go like this. And yeah, I am not very good with fractions of inches, but best I got right now. So I was using these ramps. Right now I, the last thing I had both in the air. So there would be a bending motion. Uh, but then I also took, uh, took out that one. So this, this one corner was lifted up. So there's a twisting moment on the car. And you know, ideally I could 
if I could measure this while driving, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I could not think of a good way to do that for cheap. Uh, and then I looked up some ways to measure chassis rigidity and people were doing, uh, you know, static tests like this. So I think this should apply, but we we'll, gotta wait and see. All right, first I wanna say that the amount of error introduced by my measuring technique uh, could possibly be greater than the changes that I was trying to measure. This means that the test results are not definitive and they are not concrete. Hopefully they can supplement the subjective differences that I've noticed while driving the car, uh, and we'll get to that later. On the left here, we can see the four measurements, A, B, C, and D, uh, and I took each of these measurements six times each. So uh, the flat position, uh, twisting, which was the right rear lifted up, and both rear wheels lifted up. Uh, so I did each of those three positions twice, one, once with the bushing, once without the bushing, uh, and for each I measured uh, the B and C the D each of those ways. So uh, as you can see C and D are diagonal measurements, so they are a good indicator of torsional stiffness during the twisting test. Um, but we can also look at A and B, although I, I'm not sure how important they are. We would expect C to change a lot without the bushings once the rear is lifted, and we would also expect B to get smaller and maybe A to get bigger, but I might be simplifying those motions in my head. So first up is the twisting test. Once the bushings are installed, we would expect all measurements to change less, but specifically C. The before bushing change for C was 0.44 inches, so that means our C measurement got almost half an inch smaller when we lifted the right rear up into the air. Um, so then we can look at the same measurement after we installed the bushing. And after the bushing was installed, the C measurement only got 0.19 inches smaller, which is a difference of 0.25 inches. Um, which is close to half the original change, so that means it improved by roughly 57%, which is good. With the D measurement, it actually got bigger when the right rear was lifted. Um, and that makes sense if you think about a lidless shoebox. If you try to touch the opposite corners together, uh, the other two opposites would get farther apart. So before the bushings, the D measurement changed by 0.16 inches, not bigger. Then after the bushings were installed, D only got bigger by 0.06 inches, which is a 0.09 inch difference between the two measurements, uh, which is a 60% increase in stiffness. So, so these two are, are good signs so far. Uh, but the experiment starts to to crumble a bit when we look at the bending test. Uh, honestly, I don't know if lifting the rear even adds a bending moment to the car. Uh, it really could be the same as having the car sit on flat level ground. Um, and it could be the same as parking the car on a hill. Uh, but if I could add a momentary push of force to the rear, that would make a difference. Uh, but since it's a normal force, uh, just from gravity, uh, it might be the same as B. I'm not sure. If we look at B during the bending test, uh, B got smaller by 0.25 inches, which makes sense. You would expect it, it, would, it would get smaller when we lift the car up, the rear of the car up. Uh, but after installing the bushings, the B measurement actually got bigger. 0.09 inches, but that also makes sense because the bushings should be pushing uh, the points away from each other. Uh, but then, if we look at the A measurement, uh, the opposite occurred. Uh, before the bushings, the measurement got bigger during the bending test, but then after the bushings were installed, uh, it got smaller. Uh, now, luckily. 
these numbers are very small, less than a tenth of an inch, but it's still a bad look for the accuracy. Um, however, during the twisting test, A and B had inverse movements similar to C and D. Specifically, after the bushing installation, A got smaller and B got bigger. So, is the whole thing meaningless? Probably not. So, it's been about a year since I got these bushings. So, I guess that means I need to post a video now. But subjectively, uh, these bushings are noticeable right away. Um, and they're mostly noticeable in bumps, mostly bumps during turns. Uh, car didn't feel bad before I put them in, but after I put them in, the car feels like one piece when it goes over a bump. Whereas before, it kind of felt like it would do front back, and now it's like one movement. I have a video clip here. Uh, this is from autocross in the wet, and as turning right, the rear of the car steps out, and the car is just so connected feeling that it's just super easy to put in a little input and touch it back up. It's even noticeable at higher speeds, like on the interstate. Uh, the car is just more composed and, and together and solid. It sounds like an obvious statement, but it's it is what it feels like. Uh, now I don't know if that actually translates. To, to the car being faster or not, uh, but it's certainly better composed and easier to drive because of that. So now my biggest piece of support is this little gal. Uh, this car actually was made after I installed these bushings. Is that new? Now Mazda has been making this car for over three decades, so one could argue they know what they're doing. The little roasters. And what does this brand new car have? Yes, door bushings. These are kind of squishy. Even in a similar spot. So, in conclusion, I certainly recommend these for $50. They have to be the simplest way to make your car drive better. Um, and I also encourage anyone to replicate the experiment or do it right if they know anything or at least tell me what I did wrong because I'm sure the, the video is probably useless. But anyways, thanks for watching.